state. But I think it's important that everyone understand it's, it's not just grants, it's also about leadership. It's also about how you interact with all the other agencies locally, at the state level, and the federal level. And I have the experience to do that. I've been there and I've done that.
outdated that we desperately need a new jail. I know it's going to fill up really fast, almost instantly, but uh, it is something necessary that we need in our county. And as far as staffing levels, um, we're going to need nine extra persons to staff that new jail, and uh, I don't know if that's going to happen, but, uh, but that's what uh, is required to staff the new jail, is nine additional persons for that facility. It's undermanned and understaffed now. It's, it's below state minimum manpower. And it has been for the near 20 years I've been here. Grand jury after grand jury after grand jury has reported it. And we're still below the standard of the state for manpower in the existing jail. So, again, it's going to require funding. Before we can even talk about adding additional deputies or resident deputies, we're going to have to shore up the jail because right now we're we're reporting people as working on the jail floor that are not really working on the jail floor. Therefore, below the state minimum man mandate and, and not in compliance and perpetuating fraud. As far as the new jail goes, it, you're, you're going to... I've been in the government for since I was 17, 1975, I joined the Marine Corps. If you know anything about the government, the way it operates is budgets, you can just write it into the budget. There's going to be cost overruns and time overruns. It's just the way it's done. Unfortunately. Okay, gentlemen, what we're going to do is we're going to have, we're going to have a three-minute closure. Um, so you can wrap it up, you can rebut it, you can add to your answers that you just had. And then we'll move on to the supervisor. Candidates. Okay, three minutes to close. Same order. Yes. Can I come okay. Here? okay, sure. Okay. <laughs> you want the I do. Okay. There are some real, real <coughs> complicated issues that are coming up for the chair for the next five to ten years. The jail being the biggest one, you have increasing crime. We have limited budgets. We have retention and recruitment issues to get additional deputies into this, into this uh, county, into the sheriff's department. We have a vast county that needs more and more patrol because the crime rates are going up. These are a lot of things that are on everybody's mind. And like Ron mentioned, I've been around the county as well and talking to people. Public safety is number one. The, the, the damage that's being done to our environment by Illegal cannabis cultivators. It's destroying us. It's poisoning us. It's killing our future. If we don't fix that, if we don't repair that, if we don't get figure out how to get visitors back to Trinity County, because they're leaving, if if they come up here and park their car at Trailhead, they come back and it's broken into, they're never coming back again. That hurts Trinity County. That hurts our reputation. I plan on using 30 plus years of experience in law enforcement. Yeah, all of us, from the patrol, sitting in a car, all the way up into being a captain and managing an area office of over 50 employees. I want to use all those skills to make the Trinity County another safer place again, like it used to be. When we moved here 20 years ago, I could let my kids walk down the street and I didn't have a care in the world. I wouldn't do that today. And it's nothing bad against the Sheriff's Department. It's part of this society. Part is about what people in other parts of the state have voted to allow, and it's, it's hurting us more than anyone else right now. So that's what I want to do. I want to protect you. I want to save you. I want to get businesses to come into Trinity County. I want more people to move here. I want retirees to come in here and more visitors to come here. That's my goal. Thank you.
And uh, so we can, because they're a reporting department for us. What they see out there, they report to us, and then we can respond to deal with those situations. And I just wanted to, so I didn't get a chance to say that, I just wanted to put that out there so you all know what I was, some of what I was doing on the side. And the other thing is, if I didn't get a chance to tell you what my current position is at the Sheriff's Office, I'm uh, currently administ uh, administering the uh, Code Enforcement Marijuana Program for uh, the county, and uh, that's my primary uh, duties. I'm currently working with the supervisors, county council, other deputies, and members of the communities to um, uh, for this Code Enforcement Program. And... Uh, And, uh, you know, and, the, and the, the bottom line to all this is, you know, I care about our county and the people in our county. And, you know, and I'm going to work very hard. I mean, that is my promise. I mean, I don't make too many promises, but this is one that I can't keep, and that is that I will work as hard as I possibly can to make the citizens in our county safe. And uh, do the best job I can as your sheriff. It all comes down to money, it, the, the dollar. <laughs> like everything, right? Um, I applaud uh, Mr. Saxon's history and the uh, long, illustrious career in the California Highway Patrol. However, I think he's got a rude awakening coming to him if he's lucky enough to be elected your sheriff uh, because it's going to be a little different, I think. He's not going to have money and resources raining down from the heaven of him like they seem to have at the California Highway Patrol being a state, state agency. Um, it's not like, like I said before, administration after administration before administration hasn't went out trying to get money. It was grant money. We're going to get this grant money, grant money. It's going, to, it's going to come down. We have to force that. You're going to have to force. You're going to have to put people in the board of supervisors that are willing to fund the sheriff appropriately, so that he can man a force that you deserve, so that he can get out there and, and protect the uh, community and keep it safe. Again, money, and uh, it's the county's job. It's the county's duty to fund the sheriff appropriately. And it's not right now. It's not going to happen at all. Thank you, gentlemen. You can take your seat, and we'll have the supervisors, candidates come up, please. About 10 years of experience uh, seeing the growth of not only the Willow Creek area, but also the small communities down here, and the different dynamics, the uniqueness that each little community has. I've seen a lot of the growth and fall of the cannabis businesses around here and I think uh, we're at a very critical time to figure out the direction where the county wants to go. Um, last week I spent some time talking with business owners, community members, and there seems like there's little to no unification from the different um, opinions regarding the cannabis, if it's good or bad, the homeless, if there should be a shelter or not, the drug addictions, if there should be treatment, how to treat that, the lack of money, where this money is going to come from. Um, I don't have experience in uh, politics or writing grants, but I'm passionate about this community. Um, I believe that tourism is very important. I think retiree is important too, but Tourism is going to bring in a lot more money and daily spending and support more businesses than retirees will. Um, we have these outdoor resources. Uh, whether or not cannabis becomes a resource or not, it's out there. It is something that has existed in this world a long time. I think it should be considered. Um, I really hope that we could see a community come together, not just within District 4, but all the districts and Weaverville and work together to make an economic future for our children and their children, otherwise they end up moving away and then the people move away. Um, 
I definitely in the last week feel like I lack experience, I'll be very honest. <laughs> but um, there are some perks to that as far as uh, seeing some things from a different perspective that a lot of people have been wrapped up in a long time. Uh, I recognize only one person in this room, which is kind of sad because uh, Down River in District 4 goes all the way to Sawyer. And there's a lot of community down there, there's a lot of people down there, so it's kind of sad we don't see them here. I'm not sure if there even is a voting booth that is in our area. And I'm pretty sure people have to, you know, drive an hour to Weaverville to come vote from Sawyer or Hawkins Park or Ranch. So I think that's something that could hopefully be considered if that's not being done already. So nice to meet you. Terry Mines. 
I'm uh, the actual district forest supervisor. I was appointed by the governor in December to be the supervisor. And uh, I hear a lot of talk, and I'll, I'll get in, okay, I guess I'll talk about myself. I'm a college graduate from Cal State Fullerton. I have an elementary education degree. Um, I've been a defense contractor. I've signed multi-million dollar contracts with TRW Defense and System when I used to do all the little parts. I sold parts that literally were on space shuttles that were uh, hermetically sealed. Um, I was a commercial fisherman for 20 years. Um, I have four beautiful children, three of which are currently in school. Fourth one doing a little bit of nursery down in Burnt Ranch. So as far as committed to the community, I'm com completely committed to this community. That's why I'm doing this, because this job doesn't pay much. Um, the key is, is that we have a serious issue in this county, and every sheriff candidate spoke to it. Everybody here better understand it. It's called poverty. We are the county of poverty, and we need to end this now. All right? This has to do with bringing in jobs. People want to talk about it. I have actual answers. I'm a solution-oriented type of a person. I don't come to something and just come here and say, oh, what are we going to do? I have some ideas, okay? One of them, obviously, we already have in the middle of, which is a transition of cannabis to a regulated legal market. We haven't been able to tax it yet, and that's what the local people here haven't been able to realize, is that without any of the taxation, we can't bring any of the, the, the money we need to fix the problems like the sheriffs are talking about, which I absolutely know the problems. I've been here since my 10th year, and with all these children and all the things here, I'm very aware, aware, very well aware of them. I feel number one problem being law enforcement and not having a resident sheriff down the river. I feel we have a definite lack of law enforcement and I hear people talking about this. I hear Mr. Potts specifically blaming the supervisors. He needs to get a better understanding of how the system works. Money doesn't just come out of nowhere for this and our county supervisors have actually a very small limited amount of pool of money to deal with here. So let's talk about realities and what's really going to happen here and how we're going to fix some problems. Now, Mr. Saxon brought up some things about making some cuts, which is absolutely the correct way to handle this. That's how we're going to have to do this. And we're going to talk about doing this. And we're going to have some hard cuts here, things that people don't want to see cut. But I still feel law enforcement is the number one issue, so I feel some other cuts are more important. All right? So second, I believe that we have a broadband that's going to come in here that's going to bring serious jobs, which are actually going to be the best jobs this county is going to actually see here in the future. That's going to give the ability to bring some people in here that will bring in a job that you could do down in, say, San Jose or San Francisco or somewhere like that. That brings in big revenue, and that's what we need here, people, is money. All right? And then the third one would be tourism, which we do need to change our image. We are a county. It's the most pristine county. It's the county of water. It's the origin of water. And all we have to do is do a better job of branding ourselves and getting out there and marketing our community, doing a better job. Thank you. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, put out a question and each of you will have a minute to answer that question. So I've got a couple here that are pretty much the same. One of the questions that came up on three different ones was, what is your reason for running for supervisor? I think all of you pretty much answered that. If you feel like you'd like to tag on to that, is there anybody that would like to answer that more extensively? No, yes? Um, well, there's a, like people said, there's, or like I said, there's not much involvement from downriver. So I imagine everyone here is mostly from on this side of Burton Ranch. Um, and so I really wanted to get involved. I sold my store after 10 years. I've got some time. Um, after starting to get involved in hearing about like all of this, so-called corruption, election fraud, and no one gets paid enough, and you do this for two years, you're gonna wish you never had done it. I was thinking, well, maybe, maybe I can be, uh, have a better impact in this community from a private sector, and I like businesses, I like starting businesses. I think it'd be awesome if there was a brewery in Weaverville, or a brewery in Willow Creek, things like that, that people come and see. I don't know if the Board of Supervisors is really the best position to approach those, so um, I'm still learning about this process. Like I said, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> so I'm considering, you know, hopefully one of these guys is going to be a lot more qualified than me and I can open something awesome. <laughs> Finding that I've 
I might have some more time on my hands uh, thinking about retiring, so I think I can uh, do this job and maybe uh, get a direction that we could build on to we need to bring in some kind of tourism, and I'm not sure if we can work it out with maybe the marijuana tourism. I don't know. <laughs> I want my children to be able to stay here. And I see a lot of that kind of too. With empowering landowners to be able to get this rotting timber off their land, to sell it before it's gone. Marijuana has brought a lot of money into this county, but it brought just as much trouble as it brought money. Additionally, I think we need cell phone towers here. We need technology here. I'll believe it when we broadband the cell phone when I see it. But I would like to fight for that. And that is why I'm running. Yeah. The reason I'm, I guess, running for re-elect, well, I didn't get elected, I got a point, but the reason I'm running for this position is because I've spent three years getting a good understanding of it by going to planning meetings and going to supervisor meetings. This is a process, just like government, it's bureaucracy, it takes a long time. It takes a long time to learn this. You're not going to show up in one day and figure this out. You need to build relationships. You need to build relationships within your community, within the board of supervisors, the planning community, within the other counties of this community by going to other meetings in other counties and cities, and then also the whole way down to the state. Because if we're going to get anything done in this community, people, we better get something out of the state. Okay, it's not going to happen just here. That's how we've been living, and I think since for the last 30 years, um, since the logging ended, I, all I've heard people talk to me is this has been straight just downhill destruction, nature, drug abuse, methamphetamine, opiates, the schools. Um, I, I know medically, uh, I think the services here, you know, not where I'd like to see them. So I think that's kind of what we need here. Is, you know, I want to fix things. Okay, so the next question is, um, I actually have three questions here, three different individuals that have asked about Class K housing and alternative housing. Um, how do you feel about a proposal to allow residents to build single family housing using alternative building methods, your straw bill and any other, any other than method, that, oh, any method other than conventional stick housing? I think as long as it's approved by an engineer and it's going to have long lasting, um, whatever, it's going to last for a long time, I think that it's fine. There's plenty of places in this world that build homes out of different materials. Um, the straw bale house down there is still standing in big flat. And I think if things are done properly and they're engineered, that it should be an available option. Being in the trades, uh, I have seen some interesting building in this community, uh, this county. Um, but if it can be engineered structurally and inspected, I would approve of Type K. Uh, I believe that you should be able to use alternate methods of building as long as it's safe and resellable. a lot of housing here, and I don't think it's the type of house that's being built, it's the regulatory issues, it's the amount of costs that the government demands of us, and that's a big, that's a state problem, and you know, it's, it'd be a hard fight, but we need, we need all types of housing here now. We need landowners to have the right to build these houses faster, and the quality will come, nobody wants to build a crappy house, let's be honest. <laughs> Um, I think this is a little bit trickier solution um, than just saying, yeah, special case is a great answer because I absolutely do believe we need a lot of housing in this community and I do think we need affordable housing in this community. But understanding this specifically, because I asked this question of some other board members because I was actually very much supportive, why aren't we doing this? Um, one of the reasons you don't want to do it is because or not that you want to do it with regulation a little bit, is that you just don't want everybody in the pines to go put up a cardboard shack that would look like Tijuana. Um, we already have seen what happened down in Post Mountain, people, or maybe some people haven't been down there, but go down there and take a look at it. And I don't 
don't think we want Tijuana to happen all over Trinity County, so I think we do want to have some rules and regulations here. And I'm not either way, but I think there has to be some boundaries on this. Okay, so this question, I'm going to actually combine this, and it's about um, economic development in the county. And so one of the things is, as a supervisor, um, it says the three most important topics or challenges the county faces and what do you plan to do about them. And what comes up here is um, marijuana grows, whether or not you're pro or con, and housing, and how you plan on representing your district to make changes in economic development. Um, if marijuana grows are done properly and people are stewardships to the environment and the ordinance that is put into effect is actually enforced and withheld and money is generated that will uh, exceed that of which is required to operate this program. I think it is a beneficial thing. Uh, what was the second? It was about whether or not you're calling marijuana grows. Yeah, I just did that one. Okay. Housing? Housing. What aspect of housing? Yeah, economic development and it said the three most important topics or challenges are marijuana, housing, and economic development. Um, housing, I believe there should be either a homeless shelter or a treatment halfway home center to aid with people around here. Uh, the word I heard was then you're inviting people to come stay here for the night. So it seems like there's got to be some communication resolved with that to make it work. But I do feel that it would be a beneficial thing to help people that need help. Um, tourism is the most important economic thing we have. I'm pretty sure the timber isn't really around too much anymore. So I would encourage tourism. Let's see. The marijuana issue, um, I uh, don't feel too strongly one way or the other, but I believe that if it's going to be done, it should be done small scale, not industrial, and it should be very well regulated, and that uh, they should that we should have. Uh, the growers be extremely respectful of their neighbors. Um, as far as housing, um, I don't know what the county can do for housing unless it's waive construction fees, which I don't think we can afford to do. So, and then, what was the last one? Um, economic, no, development. economic development. Um, let's see. I the three most important topics or challenges the county has faced is uh, marijuana, whether or not you're pro or con, economic development, and housing. Well, I'm pro marijuana, mostly. I think economically, though, it's going to sort itself out more than uh, regulations are going to. We'll see where this goes. Obviously, people who are hurting the environment should be held responsible for that. Um, as far as housing goes, it's a really tough question. I think that if you did wait somebody to build the fees, that more money would come back in later on. You have to you know, have a short-term cut for a long-term gain. Um, as far as the homeless problem goes, it's a real problem, and obviously the Sheriff's Department needs more money to referee it. I don't think there's an answer for it until we can find the larger problem, the symptoms get continue in the form that it is. Okay. Yeah. Um, with cannabis, yes, I'm pro-cannabis regulated. Um, with housing, um, I don't think that's anything we can do. That's up to people to spend money and build. I, don't, I think that's kind of out of our hands. As far as economic viability, now that's a different story here. That starts with jobs. Um, that starts with we obviously have cannabis and that's being regulated, and as that gets taxed, that'll bring in some. And as some people don't believe, there is broadband coming. Um, it's 
big projects, big money, there's multi-million dollar contracts, it's all up on the web, everybody can read up about it. And so that will bring an opportunity for jobs there. Tourism, um, I had a great conversation with Ms. Drake, um, actually over a different thing, and she brought it up, and we were talking about it, because everybody keeps talking about Canada tourism and Canada businesses. That wasn't what, I, I actually not into that, although I think it could happen and could be successful for some. But she was talking more of a health and holistic thing, and bringing that more of a type of a thing we could promote here. I agree with her completely. This is the most pristine place and we could promote that kind of tourism. So, okay. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to close. You're going to have three minutes to close. You can rebut add on to um, your last answers, but you have three minutes to close. Start with you, Jeremy. So it sounds like the one thing everyone agrees on is that there's not enough money um, and probably that everybody thinks the federal government doesn't help enough and the state government doesn't help enough and it's not an easy process. Um, there's some good foundations that we could all agree upon to work off of in the midst of a lot of disagreement in these issues. Um, being in Willow Creek, I saw what happened with Humboldt and how much money was collected by the county and then how many growers since just went out of business entirely. Properties are for sale at half their value. There's a lot of choices that get made by the Board of Supervisors that affect a whole trickle down of events from all these cannabis things. When they switch zoning issues, all of a sudden overnight property prices can dramatically change for certain people or certain prospective land buyers. Um, I think that although I would be lacking experience, it is possible to look at the county as a form of a business, and any business has a budget, you can look at it and you can find the inputs and the outputs, uh, you can see where there is potential excess money or more money to be made or where things can get cut, and um, I did my own bookkeeping and we, you know, it was an accounting, but we did over $5 million of business every year in Willow Creek, and that's pretty good for a little town. Um, the tourism, I think, is, is up in the top three as far as expanding the economic opportunities here. Um, actual ideas I like that would be beneficial would be a whitewater park where you place a boulder in the river and it creates a wave, and um, that it brings people from around the world that will stay for a week at a time and they just play on this wave with their kayak, their surfboard, their subboard, their boogie board. Kids can learn how to play in these waves without having to go down the whole rapid. Um, a lot of rural communities across this country have brought in these wave parks and have done really well. It's something for the kids to get into so they don't just stare at screens all the time and get people back outdoors. Um, expanding the existing trail system for mountain biking is awesome. The World Championship mountain bike thing that's held here, I think is an amazing opportunity and it should be worked off of and expanded on. The historic 299 uh, old highway, I think, should become a trail. So we have a historic trail, there's that highway, there's the PG&E line up above. They could all be connected so people could ride their bike from Weaverville down to Big Flat or down you know, to Cedar Flat or something like that. So I have a lot of ideas. Like I said, I hope uh, I'll just be able to endorse one of these candidates here and represent the, uh, further downriver because I would like to open up a business on the highway and encourage this tourism myself. I don't want to be accused of self-interest and all the scrutiny by doing both at the same time. Thank you. from people out here. Uh, the other thing is that I was, the marijuana issue is, uh, believe it or not, these people are not criminals anymore, okay? 
so we don't we we need to stop treating them like criminals. And the homeless people are not criminals. Drug addicts have a disease. They are not criminals. We need to take care of these people. We don't need to throw them in prison. So anyway, I would like to do the job of supervisor. There's only so many things you can do as a supervisor, but I would do the job. And I would like to bring to the supervisor job uh, a, a thought of response, not a reaction. Do things with thought and not through knee jerk. I want to want to be able to take the time to work out the problems and not just make a decision on a snap. Thank you very much. I think the long-term viability of this area of the county is going to come from a basket of different things. But having lived here my whole life, I know that tourism does not bring a lot of money in. It's important to have this, but it's not going to allow this county to run it on its own. So we do need to bring bad logging. We do need to allow proper marijuana growing. And um, I'm a numbers guy, so I always believe that there's a penny to be squeezed out of every single budget, every single line, everywhere. And I would like the opportunity to do that for this county, so thank you.
Okay? I'm not from Tehama County. I'm not from that area. I'm actually from Southern California. I was raised in Southern California before I went to California, Cal, California, uh, Cal State Fullerton. But I care about this place. This is my home. And we have to do this together, people. I'm not going to do it. We need to do it together with the help of everyone. Start with Shanna White. And we're just going to move across the same direction we've been moving. Just a little. So um, I'm Shanna White. I'm the county clerk recorder assessor. Um, I'd like to thank Deborah and Roger and the North Fork Range for hosting this candidate night and all of you for coming out in this blizzardy weather. Um, um, to, to take time to research your candidates before casting your vote. A little bit about me, I've moved to Trinity County in 1982. I've been married to my husband, Greg, for over 30 years. And uh, we have a successful business by constructing a roofing. Um, we're proud parents of two daughters who were born and raised in Trinity County. Um, I started working for Trinity County in 1995 in the Auditor Controller's Office. In 2010, I accepted a position as the Deputy County Clerk Recorder Assessor. In 2015, I was then appointed the County Clerk Recorder Assessor. In 2011, I received my uh, property tax appraisal certificate issued by the Board of Equalization. I'm also three courses away from my advanced appraisal certificate. I currently hold a certificate in Recordable Document Examiner, and I have had training with the Electronic Death Registration System. I've completed four courses towards my California Professional Elections Administration credential. Um, I've had attended numerous annual trainings offered by the various associations to stay informed in, on the changes of laws and procedures. Since my appointment, I've increased the office hours um, open to the public. I've implemented the ability to examine records online, official records online. Uh, you can now look at uh, grant or grantee lists online. You can look at more additional records online in our office. Uh, something I'm very proud of um, with myself, the auditor, and the current tax collector. Um, we, I attended many meetings from the survivors of the Helena fire. And with the hard work and dedication of our three offices, we got property tax bills adjusted prior to their bills going out. So I feel that was very important. Um, I've dedicated the past 23 years to Trinity County, and more importantly, the last eight in this office. My experience has provided me the knowledge and understanding <clears throat> excuse me, to ensure that the clerk recorder and elections departments run efficiently, effectively, and with integrity. I look forward to continue serving you uh, for four more years, and appreciate your vote on June 5th. Thank you. the last 12 years fighting for our rights and freedoms. Our right to liberty and the pursuit of happiness is constantly being threatened by officials who believe that the people are not capable of governing their own lives. This needs to change and it needs to start at our elections. Making sure that our elections is, are honest is the first step to ensuring our liberty. The second step is to involve the public in every aspect of the electoral process. From voting, to observing elections, to running for office, the people must participate, and as our elections officer, it will be my mission to make sure all these activities are easy to do, and that more people participate in running our county and our country. Our assessments are too high and are, and are in fact, abnormal, with a large backlog of appeals caused by misassessments. Our poor citizens are suffering because of this incorrect application of tax laws and are unable to find relief from the current assessor's office. Thank you for having me. I'll be look forward to your questions. Good evening, I'm Lisa Wright. Uh, give you a little bit about my background. Uh, I was kind of in a semi-retired, sleepy state here in beautiful Trinity County. 
when it came to my attention that there are some concerns really about how the way we are being governed um, and how the way um, our elections are being conducted. So I started to get, um, get out and speak up a little bit and uh, give you a little bit of my background and why I decided to do that. So uh, I have a master's degree in public administration. I was selected as one of 200 for the presidential management program under Reagan and then into Bush. And I was picked to really help improve the effectiveness and efficiency of government. So I spent some time there in the U.S. Justice Department, the executive office, helping to roll out a self-funded program. Um, and that was really a strong interest of mine in grad school. And part of that also included training um, from the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center in white collar crime and fraud investigation. Uh, so I spent some time looking at some of the wrongdoings that were happening uh, both in government and, and the private sector in that role. I left that position and really went back to my roots and got involved in community. I was an economic development director for eight years in a community about 14,000, similar to the size of, of uh, Trinity County. And there I found a lot of um, need for what I see here as well, which isn't really necessarily part of this office, but indirectly. And that is for expanding the tax base. So not focusing on trying to raise assess valuations, but instead broaden that tax base. And you heard about some of that from ideas on that from the, um, the Board of Supervisors. But in my heart of hearts, I've always loved democracy and, and our country and what it stands for. And that's really why I decided to run, because I want to make sure that your freedoms and your liberties are protected. I don't feel that's the case right now in Trinity County. We have court cases underway, um, election procedures that have been questioned, scathing grand jury reports. One of the most fundamental rights that you have is the right to vote. And that should be in a free and fair election. The only thing secret about that is actually when you cast your vote. There should be public observation allowed, public participation in a free um, and fair way. So my goal is to be fair, honest, and transparent, and include the public as much as possible, to have really good customer service, so that when you come in and you have questions, that you're greeted and dealt with in a very professional, um, kind way. I think that's very important, because there's a lot of unknowns, and. Uh, it's really the role of government to help you understand how you're being affected. So with that, thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate it, and I would ask you for your vote on June 5th. Make the right choice, Lisa Wright. Okay, let's see. We've got three of the same questions here. So what, let's just combine this. So, um, First question is going to be, what experience do you possess which qualifies you to handle all the different job duties within this office? Start with you. As I noted in my um, opening statement, I have been the, worked in the office for eight years. I have my uh, certified tax appraiser certificate that has qualifications to get that, and you must get that within the first year. I've attended numerous trainings um, to stay apprised of the different changings of laws. Um, and I feel that I'm the best candidate because I have the experience. I have 23 years experience with Trinity County also, um, 15 in the auditor's office. So I feel I'm the best candidate because I am qualified with the experience, the knowledge, and the dedication. Thank you. experience includes working for my family's four automotive shops, doing the bookkeeping, accounts payable, and customer service since I was 12 years old. And I've been running our family ranch and mining ventures, and I'm a member of the oldest mining district in the United States. Uh, I served as a member of the Trinity County Collaborative for two years to help make our communities fire safe, and I have dedicated my entire adult life to community service. My experience is unique as I have been politically active since I was 16 years old and I lobbied extensively at the state capitol for ranchers and farmers and know how to make appointments with the legislators, go to their offices and explain issues and suggest solutions. That will enable me to be effective at representing our county when laws that affect our voting rights come up. I have taken the appraiser's course and upon being elected can take the appraiser's exam for my appraiser's certificate. 
I'm also the youngest member of the California Eco Board Forum of Board Directors. Let's see, I, I touched on my qualifications with my background. Um, having come out of uh, in the master's program in public administration, um, I was well trained as well as at the U.S. Justice Department on, on proper procedures and um, following the law, which is very important. I'm very dedicated to the law. I think there's questions about that, whether or not the law has actually been followed by this office. And so my qualifications um, include also, I have very easy, you know, easy ability, I guess, to learn, and so I'm not worried about um, getting my appraiser certification or any of those kinds of certifications. Um, that's something that I would take on and welcome. So, okay. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to comply with this question. Uh, and this is about voting. And so, what is the most important role that a register of voters plays? And why are some areas mandatory vote by mail? Why are polling places closed? So, questions. The most important role for, of the, the ROV, the Registrar of Voters, is to make sure that every eligible voter has the right to vote and they vote confidential, confidentially. Um, and the reason why not every polling place is open in Trinity County is because if there's 250 or less registered voters in a precinct, then they are um, a vote-by-mail ballot. So when they cast their vote, it is by mail only. website, the role of the uh, clerk or elections officer is to run elections, register people to vote, and maintain voter registration lines. Uh, these are not being done quite as well as they should be, unfortunately. Uh, it would be my job if elected to make sure that all of these things are being done absolutely correctly with integrity and honesty. Uh, the reason that uh, our voter, um, I'm sorry, our voting places are closed down is because, according to the election office, is cost. I've heard that from them several times. And it, to me, this is not a matter of cost. This is something that is necessary for our freedoms, to have an easy place to go and vote. And there is, uh, the, the law does not state that we have to have a vote by mail if you have fewer than 250 people uh, registered to vote in your district. So I believe that you should have unfettered access really to any polling place within um, the county. Um, you should not be required to vote by mail. That is something that's not accurate. The 250 is something that's been you know, decided by this particular registrar's office. So the register of voters, it's really important that you're allowed to vote, you're allowed to register, that ballots aren't disqualified because your signature's off a bit or your address is off a bit. That's happened in the past. We need to make sure that that stops. So be sure that you check and make sure that you know what your vote, uh, your address is. Because even if you do your vote by mail, if you get that address wrong, your ballot could be disqualified. You're supposed to be given an opportunity to come in and do a provisional ballot. There's been questions if that's actually happened. Those ballots are to be preserved for a certain number of years. There's a question over whether that's happened. Your right to vote is imperative. The registrar of voters needs to ensure that you're able to exercise that very precious right. Okay, we'll go with one more. Um, what experience do you have in regards to assessing citizens' property and extending property tax rules? Uh, if you don't have any, what is your backup plan to accomplish this? Extending property tax rules on time is imperative in order for the auditor's office to be able to complete her portion of the tax collector's bill. And this is an issue. I remember. Can we pass the mic down? Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. So my education and uh, background on appraising properties is I hold a current tax appraiser's certificate issued by the Board of Equalization. I've had that certificate since 2011. We, um, property tax, properties are assessed based on codes from 
issued by the Tax and Revenue Codes. They're looked at comparable sales, and um, getting the tax roll out is very important. The county, the, the general fund, the discretionary dollars are uh, imperative to the general fund and the budget for every county department. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What experience do you have in regards to assessing citizens' property and extending property tax rolls? If you don't have any, what is your backup plan to accomplish this? Extending property tax rolls on time is imperative in order for the auditor to be able to complete her portion of the tax collection bills that as they're mailed. Okay. It's actually like about three questions. So. <laughs> So, um, I, as I stated before, I do have I have taken the course to get my uh, appraiser certificate, and once elected, I can go and finish that uh, call up that certification. Um, I do not currently have experience in uh, doing a massive role as this county does have, but. I, as I also said, I've uh, worked for since I was 12 years old doing bookkeeping and accounts payable as in my family's businesses, which were many and very, very active. So I do have a lot of experience with pushing paper. <laughs> um, so I think that because I forgot a part of your question. <laughs> Yeah, when you get to that third one, it's like, oh, okay. I know, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to combine all these little three-by-five cards here with right? similar questions. Okay, so the assessed valuation is very important to all of you, right? And that's why one of my tenants is really we need to expand that tax base and not continue to look to increase your assessed um, property valuations. Uh, in terms of getting that information out, certainly that would be a function of the office in the management of the office, because this is a clerk, recorder, assessor position, I would be looking for qualified individuals in each of those three areas that I would work with. It should never fall really under one person to have that much control or power over you. There should be checks and balances in place and people put in those positions with that experience. It is required by law that this position um, get uh, the appraiser certification within the first year. As I said, I don't think that would be a problem. But the accuracy of your assessments and the Equality is extremely important. I think if you start to look at the roles and you compare comparable properties, you're going to see quite a bit of discrepancy. We've already done some research on this so that somebody is being taxed at a much higher rate for a comparable property. And I wonder why that is, right? That's a question that we need to ask ourselves. So equality in this area and equity is incredibly important. Okay, we're going to wrap up and you'll have three minutes to um, give a closing statement. I'll just stand back over here. So, um, in closing, I'd like to once again thank Deborah, Roger, and the North Fork Range, and all of you people for coming out and um, to, to get to know your candidates before casting your vote. I do want to clarify a couple of things that is said by my opponents. Um, there is not a backlog of appeals. Currently, we have two appeals for 2017. There's no more than that. Um, the only reason your ballot would be disqualified is if your signature was not on that envelope or if it didn't match. It is not disqualified if you did not put your correct address on there. But please do call the office to double check to make sure that your address is correct so that for future elections and all the elections that you are getting your address correctly. Um, as for property taxes, a neighbor's property could be valued differently than another. Is Somebody could have owned that property since 1976, and then they have a Prop 13 based year value versus somebody who just bought it yesterday, and they get a, the current uh, fair market value. So that's why somebody neighbors could have different values on their property. Um, please understand that this position is more than just elections. Um, there are a lot of rumors out there. There's a lot of words regarding myself and my staff and the qualifications of myself and my staff, and I stand behind every one of them. Um, I'd encourage you to do research. Please do. If you have any questions, feel free to ask myself or anyone in my staff and get the research in the background on all these rumors that are going out about my office. Uh, if you have any questions that I have not answered tonight um, or while you're doing your research to know who is the best candidate for you and this county, please contact me. Thank you again and I appreciate your support.
Some of my goals are the registration of all high school students that are old enough to vote, and, hope to, and I hope to have an additional class so that they can learn about the electoral process and their rights as voters. I want to reopen our polling places because closing near, nearly all the polling places has added to the disenfranchisement of voters. I intend to follow the law that every voter receives a voter card that shows their name, address, and party affiliation so that each voter can be sure all is correct. And another one of my goals is to train the personnel, both permanent and temporary, like poll and canvas workers, so that they are professional and follow the law. I plan to restructure each department so that it will run smoothly and competently, with the goal being to provide excellent service. I have been working diligently to fix our elections office, and I have found the only way I can do this is from the inside as the elections officer. Please join me in giving Trinity County back its prosperity by voting for me so that we can live our lives knowing that there are people who will fight for us and that we can fight for ourselves. If you have any questions for me or comments beyond what has been uh, addressed here, please feel free to contact me. My cards and my flyers will be uh, here or just come up and email you mine. Know, thank you. Good night. Again, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. Um, when I was a little girl, I used to spend a lot of time in the library. Uh, and one of the things that I'd love to do is really to read uh, the biographies of the presidency. And I really came to love and appreciate the rights that we've been given in, the, in this country. And I think it's important to remember that there's been a lot of bloodshed for us so that we have these fundamental rights, including the right to vote. I feel that includes property rights as well. And you need to be treated fairly and have uh, unfettered access, really, to polling places. There shouldn't be any polling places that are closed down. I think you should be able to actually go to any polling place um, within the county. And they are rolling that out in some of the counties around um, the state of California. So please keep in mind that you need someone who's going to be in office that will look out for your best interests, who in her heart of hearts believes in that, those fundamental liberties and ensuring that those are carried out and offered to you um, by your local government. Thank you for this opportunity, and again, um, I'd ask for your vote on June 5th. Lisa Wright, make the right choice. Okay, thank you very much. insufficiencies that have been found in audits. We have running uh, negative balances in funds. That's like not balancing your bank account. That can't really happen. The last quarter of um, uh, investment reports that is posted was March 2016. Um, there's no evidence of reconciliation with the auditor. That should be done quarterly, even monthly. I believe in transparency. We need to know what our balances are in each fund, where that money is going, coming in from state and federal mandate funds and then going out to our different departments. We get a lot of money here, almost $100 million, sometimes a little less, a little, a little more, uh, for this county with only less than 14,000 people. 
and I intend to find out exactly where all that money is because it's, I believe that we have money that we can use for many of these programs and I intend to work hand in hand with the auditor. I have been working hand in hand with our auditor and our, pre, our past auditor, Marilyn Horn, as well, and they were both fine, they're both fine people. And I found that there were many uh, problems, and those problems, some of those problems have been resolved, but some of them were secretive and not because of the auditors. For instance, the CAFRs before the comprehensive, comprehensive Annual Financial Report was not posted or even available. I had to ask many times, and the County Council would not give it to me until the auditor decided to share it with me, and now it is posted. So there are improvements, but we need to know what the real facts are. Right now, for instance, the uh, Board of Supervisors have budgeted for $10 million more than what we're getting, and we're actually getting $10 million less. We're in the negative. Our revenues are $10 million negative, and they want $10 million more this year in expenses. So budgets, you, you want, just like you have your own bank account, you want to balance with what you're spending, and that's really what the treasurer does. There, it's irresponsible to have accounts that are negative. That has to be fixed. The hours are very restricted. I intend to open the office from 9 to 5, so that whether you're working or you want to come on your lunch, etc., you can come and pay your taxes or deal with questions. Um, I intend to bring in a very good team, which includes an ex-state auditor, forensic auditor. I intend to bring in, uh, as a consultant, a high-level uh, CPA, who also ran one of the largest companies in um, the Bay Area, in Oakland, um, to help straighten out our, our books, to find out what's going on and why we have negative balances. For instance, we had a half a million negative balance in our grants program. Where did that money ever go? Etc. There have been no answers. This has been brought up many times at the Board of Supervisors. Thank you very much for having me. Good evening. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Terry McBrayer. I'm your current Treasurer Tax Collector. For those of you that do know me, um, I tend to the talk a lot, so I'll try to keep this short and sweet. Um, if you're here tonight, you're here because you want answers. Um, you're here on your own time because you want to make sure that this, um, that we care about this county and that you want to make sure that your, your candidate uh, cares about this county as well. I love where I live. I love my community. I care what happens to this community and those that live here. I'm the treasurer, tax collector candidate that cares with the experience and education that you can rely on. My husband and I wanted to raise our children here in Trinity County, where he grew up. We wanted our children to experience the close-knit community that he was able to have. Um, Jeremy and I have two adult children and a teenage son. Um, I'm dedicated and active in the community, having served on the, um, and currently still serving on volunteer fire department board. Um, we're current foster parents. I've been a Sorotomous member, 4-H leader, sports team parent, um, Cub Scout leader, and Girl Scout leader. Um, I've served in the Treasurer Tax Collector's Office since 2007. I've held the position since 2009. My finance and banking experience spans over 20 plus years. I hold a bachelor's degree in accounting with an emphasis in um, business administration. I'm a credentialed California County Senior Executive through CSAC. Um, you know, government, we love our uh, acronyms. CSAC stands for um, California State Association of Counties. I am committed to fulfilling my legal obligation to collect and protect the vital revenues of, of county government, promote efficiencies, and deliver the highest quality of service. Um, I am continually in pursuit of education and enhancing my knowledge and laws and regulations that are constantly changing. Um, I've implemented several new programs and procedures that have returned delinquencies into revenue generating statuses. Um, as treasurer, I manage the county investment portfolio while following a safe investment policy and maximize, maximizing the county's return on investments. Um, negative fund balances and those sort of things, those don't pertain to the county uh, or to the county treasurer. Those actually are auditor functions. And we are actually audited um, yearly by an external um, auditing firm, and that firm does change every so often. Um, we have several accomplishments that we've accomplished during my terms. Um, we've initiated um, 
we tend to be uh, a little bit behind on the times as far as technology is concerned. Um, we've enabled um, county departments throughout to start accepting credit cards. Um, we, in our department specifically, now you're able to pay your, uh, view and pay your credit cards, or your tax bills online too. Um, I have lots of things, I have lots more details, but I'd be more than happy to talk to you more details if you'd like to stick with me. Thanks. So both of you um, have kind of gone into a little bit of what your experience is. I'm going to let you expand on that. So what experience do you possess which qualifies you to handle all the different duties within this office? One minute? Yes. All right, one minute. I have a lot of qualification, particularly in the business world. Um, I was protege of the man that actually developed branch banking um, and worked for World Security Fund. I didn't work there, but I was an apprentice there. And they um, handled American companies throughout the world. I traveled and um, uh, where it was able to get laws changed so that American corporations could move to other countries. And, and arranged all their um, infrastructure so they could set up and, and do whether it's manufacture or provide services in other countries. Um, I've lobbied other countries' governments, including our uh, state government, extensively. I've been very successful in stopping um, bills that are uh, bad for the people in general, especially um, rural communities. Um, I actually run many, many, many businesses as well as set up businesses across the country. I hold multiple degrees as well as um, credentialing through the state. In addition to that, um, I was elected and I served on um, respective organizations throughout the state, CACTAC, which stands for California Association of Treasurers and Tax Collectors. My fellow colleagues in the 58 counties elected me to serve on that. Um, I am on the executive committee. I'm on the legislative committee. Um, I train my fellow treasurer tax collectors. I am very proactive in training others to make sure that we are well aware and within the laws to make sure that um, especially rural counties like ours do not find ourselves in predicaments that um, are not within the laws and that will, can and will be detrimental to us. So I found myself extremely qualified. Is there any questions from the audience? We have one question for these guys. Any questions? Yeah, I want to know some more uh, about Diane's experience as a tax collector. I happen to work in that office and I haven't heard her talk much about that. Okay. Did you hear the question about that? Yes, I did. Well, thank you for the question. Um, in my businesses that I run and set up for other corporations, etc., you have to collect. And I've been very good at that. I've been able to take corporations and businesses that were in the negative and work those collections. Um, I do uh, applaud that there is um, an online service now that's been very good, especially since the hours are so limited in the office that you can't get in to pay. Um, I've heard of, uh, lots of problems in the tax collection that people have gone in and pay with cash and then later on they are billed again for the same thing and have allegedly no proof of payment. So there's been a lot of problems that have been brought up to me and I want to look into those things again using a forensic auditor in the office so that we know where every dime is and accounted for. as far as the types of investments that we can invest in, as far as um, 
um, types and lengths and uh, that sort of thing, but that's, I do the investments. What kind of investments do you make? Um, as far as uh, bonds, different <coughs> mutual funds, depends on what we're... You put money in mutual funds? We, depends on what it is, so. But. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for these guys? No? Oh, in the back? My question is, well, I'll make a statement first. Andrew Mickle, I'm your controller. So I took tonight out to not be up there so that I could actually listen to all the candidates and ask questions as that would be allowed. So my biggest concern, just so that you all know, is that general fund departments are dependent upon the collection of tax revenue. 75% of our $11 million budget is comprised from college tax revenue. Therefore, if one, there's, as they were talking, there's three, I call them three legged skills. You've got the assessor who assesses your property, sends a little to me, and then I do, I apply the tax rates after I calculate them, put the assessments from all your independent special districts that are even approved by voters, and then I send it down to the tax collector in time for her to do her process as far as mailing out the bills. When the bills come back in, that revenue is then deposited in the appropriate accounts, depending on what type of property tax revenue it is. And my concern is, what knowledge does everybody have? I know that I've worked with Terry in the past, but what knowledge does um, Brian have as far as ensuring that money, the bills go out, the assessor in Frenza, that she actually assesses and gets the rolls to me on time in order for us to operate? If we don't have that re revenue coming in for property taxes, this county is not going to have money to fund the sheriff, the DA, any of the general fund departments. And there's a whole bunch of them, including paying off our debt. So, I just wanted to make that statement. Was there a question in there? <coughs> they would like to elaborate as to, I mean, I know what Terry's knowledge is as far as if, if okay. Diane was going to elaborate as far as her knowledge of collections and. Um, right. So collections, of course, are very important. I can't believe that I would be in this position to be a tax collector because I am a Tea Party leader. So taxed enough already, type of thing. But however, I've actually contacted many property owners and said, "Hey." Your taxes haven't been paid. Haven't been paid. If you want to lose your property? You better get in there and pay it like today. So I feel like I would take a very personal um, approach to try and get our our property owners to pay what they need to pay, so that they don't lose their properties. Um, as well as, like I said, I'm going to bring in a very very competent team so that we can make sure that. All the T's are crossed, all the I's are dotted. It wouldn't just be me. It would be some very high level personnel would be coming in to help us here in the county to straighten it out.
we're going to have additional funding to actually be able to provide all these people that you're talking about. Because any additional money, based on past experience of working in the county for over 26 years, goes to the sheriff's department. Let them go to my department, let them go to the sheriff's department, let them go to the corporate reporter, let them go anywhere else. It goes to the sheriff's Um, as far as you're concerned for union, I'm extremely concerned for a union. We have, our CalPERS is the lowest that we're meeting the ratio. It should be 75%. We're extremely low. We already had Hayfork Water District go belly up bankrupt, and those people are receiving only a very small portion of their pension. We have to find out where this money, why we haven't been paying in appropriately, so yes, I'm very concerned for our workers with their CalPERS. We have, I think it's something like 700, almost 700 people on our CalPERS program, and there's about 300 some that are working right now. I'm very concerned for them. That's why I'm concerned about our money. As far as the audit goes, the every audit that they've come in, they used a, a, an auditor, Galena, I think it is, for just about the past 10 years. They just got a new auditor this year. And every single time they brought up that these negative balances are an issue. I would love to speak to the PERS issue. The PERS issue is something that is way beyond my control. That is something that is not a tax collector function. And I can speak to you. Um, firefighters are a passion. We have a, my husband was a firefighter for many, many years. Um, and as far as the fire, fire district, having been a part of Weaver Real Fire District, I can tell you that for two employees, first of all, to get out of PERS, we either need to be self-funded, which um, we are in no position as treasurer. I can tell you we do not have the funds to get out of PERS. Um, we are like a bad car note. So for those of you that try to go in and trade your car in, if your car is not worth enough and you go try to get a new car, you have a problem. So that being said, on the fire department, we had two employees that were, they wanted to get out of purse. So they offered the fire department a discount. It took them over nine years to get out of purse with a discount at $40,000 a pop. You do the math, folks. We cannot get out of purse without taking a serious hit. We have more retirees than we do employees. And I, for one, and we're not gonna go after our retirees. Are we gonna, they're not gonna ever agree to, oh, I'm, I'm retired, let's take away my benefits. Not gonna happen. Okay, well, we're gonna wrap it up with you guys.